Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Reapercast. We have some more cards being revealed in Battle of Chaos. Actually, this is apparently coming from V-Jump, so very crazy here to see that it's technically a new archetype being introduced in the Battle of Chaos set here, but with that being said, this is definitely something that is really eye-catching. Firstly, it's meant to be a dinosaur deck, but given my first impression of the quick art that I'm actually scrolling through here, they don't look like dinosaurs whatsoever. In fact, they're quite a sight to behold. However, there are a lot of cards to go over, so we're just going to get started right away. But if you guys enjoyed this video, definitely consider dropping a like, share, comment, and subscribe. It really does help. Without further ado, let's see what the first card actually has to offer. So we have over here Dino Rufia Theresia. Really peculiar naming, maybe it's named after certain dinosaurs. The whole idea that the archetype is called the Dino Rufia is pretty interesting, it's like Dragon Maids 2.0, and honestly it would be quite fun to actually see a duel between these two particular archetypes. However, I would like to be informed about the actual meaning behind the naming behind all of these actual monsters here. So this is a level 4 Dark Dinosaur effect monster with 1500 attack and 0 defense, and the first and second effects of this card's name can only be used once per turn each. So first effect, if this card is normal or special summon, you could set one Dino Rufio trap card directly from your deck to your spell and trap zone. Then if you have 2000 or less life points, this card gains 500 attack. That's not bad, but it's a very specific kind of condition. To have less than 2000 just so that this could gain 500 attack, it's pretty crazy because that implies that you have to have less than a quarter of your actual life left. It's almost as if this kind of archetype is assuming that you'll actually make it in the long game. However, the second effect reads, if this card is destroyed by battle or card effects, you could banish one trap from your graveyard, special summon one level 4 or lower dino rufia monster from your graveyard except itself. Not bad, a really nice way of actually recurring itself. And right off the bat, we can already see that this deck is focusing on trap cards. Maybe it's just this particular effect over here, but we're going to see what the rest are because I'm assuming they will have some trap support. But this deck is definitely very fast on trap cards. The second card we have here is called Dino Rufia Diplos, a level 4 dark dinosaur effect monster. With 1000 attack and 0 defense, and the first and second effects of this card's name can only be used once per turn. First effect, if this card is normal or special summon, you could send one Dino Rufia card from your deck to the graveyard, then if you have 2000 or less life points, inflict 500 damage to your opponent. Again, that's really weird that they're actually requiring you to have less than a quarter of your life points left, but even so, we haven't seen all the cards yet, so it's really hard to say. Second effect, if this card is destroyed by battle or card effect, you can banish one trap from your graveyard, special summon one level 4 or lower Dino Rufia monster from your graveyard except this card. So very similar effects, it seems like if any of the future main deck monsters actually come out, they're going to have that same effect anyway, or similar effects. But again, with a main focus being on trap cards, which is kind of nice because if trap cards are actually being pushed more as a type of card to play, that's fantastic. It makes it more balanced, more all-rounded, because for the longest time we've been focusing so long on monsters and spells, and traps have kind of been left behind, so to bring them back, even if it's through one archetype, it's definitely well worth it. Sure, we have decks like Altergeist and Trap Tricks, but that doesn't really matter, it's the fact that there's one more additional archetype that's capable of utilizing trap cards as the main engine. Now interestingly, we do have some fusions here, so it looks like this will also include a fusion type of deck though. However, we have no idea that in the future they might give us some synchros or XEs, but for the time being, fusions seem to be what they are. We have Dino Rufia Kentrogena a level 6 dark dinosaur fusion effect monster of 4000 attack and 0 defense. Wow, that's strong. That's crazy. 4000 attack as a level 6 monster. That's pretty insane. And it only requires two Dino Rufia monsters with different names. Alright, what on earth is this? I mean, that's insane. You can only use each effect among the second and third effects of this card's name only once per turn. Alright, so first effect, it loses attack equal to your life points, so it really does focus on your life points. So far, what we've actually learnt is that this particular archetype focuses on trap cards, it focuses on fusion summonings, and it focuses on your life. Now that's definitely very peculiar here. 
This deck is giving me a lot of different vibes. However, as for the second effect, during the main phase as a quick effect, you can pay half your life points then banish one Dino Rufia normal trap from your graveyard. This effect becomes that trap card's effect when that card is activated. Not bad, I mean that's pretty powerful. And third effect, if this card is destroyed by battle or card effect, you can special summon one level 4 lower Dino Rufia monster from your graveyard. So again, they have great ways of actually recycling themselves if they all get destroyed. It's almost like an endless cycle, almost like crawlers, except in this case it's from the graveyard. The next card we have over here is Dino Rufia Stealth B Gear, a level 6 Dark Dinosaur Fusion effect monster of 0 attack and 2500 defense, so now something that's actually more on the defensive side of things. Good to see a bit of variety in terms of what their monsters offer. Only requires 2 Dino Rufia monsters with different names. You can only use each of the second and third effects of this card's name only once per turn. First effect, while you have 2000 or less life points, you do not pay life points to activate trap cards or Dino Rufia monster effects. Now that specifically says trap cards, meaning this could include stuff like the Solemn Brigade, that's pretty powerful. Second effect, when your opponent activates a monster effect as a quick effect, you can inflict damage to them equal to that monster's original attack. Wow, that's not bad at all, I mean, it really is a well-rounded deck. Third effect, if this card is destroyed by battle or card effect, you could special summon one level 4 lower Dino Rufia from your graveyard. So again, more recursion, that's great. Alright, so onto the trap card. So there's actually no spell support whatsoever, but that's fine. I mean, even so, this is already a very fast deck, especially given that its focus is trap cards. We have Dino Rufia Domain, a normal trap card. You can only activate one card with this card's name per turn. First effect, during the main phase, pay half your life points, fusion summon one Dino Rufia fusion monster from your extra deck, using monsters from your hand deck or field as fusion material. Alright, so that's kind of making sense now why you're actually losing your life points really quickly here. It's because you're paying half your life points just off one card to fusion summon. Second effect, when your opponent activates a card or effect, if you have 2000 or less life points, you can banish this card from your graveyard, you take no damage from your opponent's card effects this turn. Not bad at all, definitely really beneficial. Honestly, I could see that this deck is clearly a powerful deck, and the fact that they have this handicap of you actually losing life points really quickly kind of balances things out. I'm really impressed with this entire archetype. But moving on, we have Dino Rufia Alert, another normal trap card. You can only activate one card with this card's name per turn. First effect, pay half your life points. Wow, now that's crazy again. For the rest of this turn, you cannot special summon monsters except Dino Rufia monsters. Also, special summon from your graveyard up to two Dino Rufia monsters whose total levels equal eight or less, but they cannot declare attacks. I mean, that's okay. What if you could actually just go for your fusion summons? You're bringing back more materials anyway. You could even go for an XC summon. Well, only if it is a Dino Rufia monster, which we still haven't got one. But even so, you get the point. Second effect, when your opponent activates a card or effect, if you have 2000 life points or less, you could banish this card from your graveyard, you take no damage from your opponent's card effects this turn. So again, it's definitely doing really well here to protect us from a burn deck as well. Even though we have less life points, there's a bit of irony to it. We have a little bit of life points, but it seems almost as if a burn deck can't even touch this. Next up, we have Dino Rufia Brute, a normal trap card again. You can only activate one card with this card's name per turn. So it seems like it's a common trend that all of these trap cards are only restricted to one per turn. I guess that's okay given each of these effects are pretty powerful. First effect, pay half your life points. <laughs> it's pretty insane. Destroy both. One Dino Rufia monster you control and one card your opponent controls. Not bad, but the fact that you have to pay your life, that's again pretty crazy. It's a good thing that we have a card that actually prevents us from losing life. But you know what, by paying half it's not necessarily hurting us. We can never actually turn ourselves to zero. Because half doesn't mean losing life points, it just means cutting it in half. So you'll never actually reach zero no matter what. Even if you have one life point, you halve it, it becomes 0.5. And the second effect, again, it's the same as the previous trap cards, you could prevent effect damage, and that's all that matters. Moving on, we have Dino Rufia Shell, this time we have a counter trap card, so finally we have something a bit different, but you know what, for a trap deck, you need to have a counter trap card. It needs to have something that's powerful, that's unstoppable, so to see this, 
it's quite expected. You can only activate one of this card again, so it makes sense. So first effect, at the start of your opponent's battle phase, pay half your life as expected. Special summon one Dino Rufia token, Dinosaur Dark level 10, zero attack, 3000 defense, and if you do, your opponent cannot target other monsters for attacks while you control that token this turn. Very nice, very defensive, forcing them to attack a 3000 defense. Truly excellent. Second effect, during damage calculation, if you would take battle damage and you have 2000 life points or less, you could banish this card from your graveyard, you take no damage from this battle. Alright, that's fantastic. It seems like the counter traps this time might actually protect us from battle, so I love that they're covering all different kinds of directions here. Making this deck pretty close to perfect to be honest, and I rarely use the term perfect to describe anything at all. But moving on, we have Dino Rufia Sonic, another counter trap card, and you can only activate one of these. First effect, when your opponent activates a spell or trap card, if you control Dino Rufia, pay half your life points, negate the activation, and if you do destroy that card, then destroy one Dino Rufia monster you control. A fair payment, because there is a potential chance that you could just not pay whatsoever with your life points, and instead just do the other stuff. But again, it's a counter trap card, so it's really powerful. And second effect, similar to the previous counter trap card, you can protect yourself from battle. As for the final card, we have here Dino Rufia Reversion, another counter trap card, and you can only activate one of these. And you guys can probably already guess that the second effect will protect you from battle damage. However, the first effect, if you control a Dino Rufia Fusion Monster, pay half your life and then banish one counter trap from your graveyard, this effect becomes that counter trap card's effect. Wow, that's really nice here. This card can extend your previous counter trap cards, that's really powerful. As an overall, I love this deck already, uh, just off this first early introduction of this archetype. I think I have to say it, but I'm gonna build this deck. It's really hard to say that this deck is going to be a bad deck, I mean, this deck is just so good, it covers everything. But it just seems like such a balanced deck, it seems like such a fair deck, it doesn't seem like any of these cards would be hit in the ban list in the long run. Because all of these individual cards have actually been so well designed, it's so well thought out. I'm actually very impressed with this particular archetype. Of course I did wish that they give us more monsters and that would definitely be fantastic because let me just say the monsters have pretty nice artwork. But already, I'm excited to see what other future support they have. However, this video has gone on long enough, so definitely leave me your thoughts as to what you think about this. Otherwise, thanks for joining me today. I hope you all have a splendid day. I'll see you all next time.